Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and today we are doing another reading vlog. So, this is not part of the plan. Like, I had all of the videos I want to do in June planned out because, like, I'm getting back to scheduling stuff. Who is she? Like, I'm trying to do, like, Wednesday and Saturday. And, like, I have a list of every video, but now I'm doing this, and it's not even, like, I have nine books on my TBR already, and now I'm adding more books, and, yeah, I'm not thinking this through, clearly. Yesterday, I started half so by Olivia Atwater, and I was like looking at like the blurbs and stuff like that, and everyone was like saying, you know, it's feel good, cozy, all of these things. And, like I did a whole reading vlog trying cozy fantasies, which I'll leave linked down below. And I read four in that, and I was kind of like, I'm not necessarily sure cozy fantasy is my thing. I want to just read some like feel good things. That I turned to Twitter, and so I asked people on Twitter. Um, I can't remember what the or exact original tweet was, but it was basically, give me some feel-good books. They can be any genre, but I imagine most of them will be either romance or, like, cozy fantasy. And so, I, my recommendations that I've gotten, every, um, she recommended Spell Make Frills, which I've already read and I loved. And obviously, I'm reading another Olivia Atwater in this anyway, <laughs> but I love that book. I give it four stars but it's like my highest four stars so far this year so jade from jerry reed she said i was just guide to the fence of baking i actually read that in the original cozy fancy reading vlog and then legends and lattes which i also read another original cozy fancy reading vlog. i also read small miracles in that so that's three of the four books that i've written that, that i've recommended so yes um so i read all of those and i give them all three or four stars obviously i'm reading this and then i'm also going to reread the Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I am getting the audiobook, I think, is it like the 4th of June or something it becomes available? But I actually own the paperback, which I think has an extra essay or two. And like, some of the stories in there are pretty sad, but I would say the tone throughout is hopeful. So we'll also be rereading that in this. And the other ones, Pam said, if you're into manga slash graphic novels, I highly recommend the Are Not So Lonely Planet Travel Guide and i checked and it is on scribd i've never read a manga before but hey i have been like since i feel like a lot of people have been like trying them lately i've been intrigued and like this seems to be like a really sweet kind of contemporary one about like a couple as they travel the world it seems sweet it's like 200 pages and like it is you know pictures <laughs> so like it shouldn't take long so i'll read that as well and then becca from the becca bell <laughs> Uh, recommended in deeper waters uh, so this is ever after and spellbound they're all by the same author obviously not going to read them all but i will read one i might see which one came out first or which one has the highest reviews because i don't think they're actually in the same series i think they're just like the same author um but but so they're by ft lukens and becca said they're cute cozy and queer way fantasies which i feel like yeah like ya fantasies like they're always easy and fun to read but see the problem is <laughs> It mightn't be a problem, but it could be a problem. Is all of the audiobooks are narrated by Kevin R. Free, who is Murderbot to me. So that's the narrator for Murderbot. And so in my head, he's Murderbot. But like, also, I'm like, but he does like a robot kind of a voice for Murderbot. So I'm like, he's probably going to sound very different in these. So like, I shouldn't be freaking myself out. He's probably going to sound very different. But also, I'm like, what if all I hear from everything is Murderbot? So those are the books that I'm going to be reading. The first book that I'm reading, however, is Half Soul by Olivia Ashwater, and I'm currently about 50 pages in, as I said, I started this yesterday, and I'm enjoying it so far. There is just like something really charming about her books. Yeah, I, I have I have a good feeling about this. I like I don't think it's going to be live up to Small Miracles for me. I don't think it's going to be my favorite. I don't think I'm going to love it as much as that, but I do think that I really enjoy it. Um, So basically the story, so we follow Dora, and it's in Regency era, and she live her father and her mother are dead so she lives with her her uncle her aunt and her cousin and her and her cousin are like really close and when she's young she gets like caught by a fairy and the fairy start says that he is owed her soul and so he like starts to like take her soul but the cousin interrupts and then he so he only ends up getting half her soul it makes her so that she like doesn't really feel emotions and so she like doesn't feel embarrassed or angry and so like people will be insulting her and she won't care and also like she'll 
you know, she kind of doesn't have a filter sometimes. And um, obviously this is maybe causing some problems for her cousin who is looking for a husband, but her like cousin is like really sweet and lovely to her. And then we have also like recently been introduced to like the like royal like wizard basically. He has not grown up in nobility, but he has kind of gotten a place there because of his being so powerful. And so he is kind of a bit rude to everyone because he like doesn't really care about them. <laughs> and obviously there's gonna be a romance between the two of them. <laughs> and I think obviously he's probably gonna try and help her reclaim the other part of her soul and all of this. And I, I already know that's gonna be very sweet. And yeah, um, like I said, I'm 50 pages in and I'm enjoying it so far. So I might try and finish it this evening because it is only like six o'clock. I will see you later. <laughs> I will say, I literally have not moved since I last book you, but I will say one thing that I really like about her books is the humour, and I definitely think it's not a humour that will work for everyone, because like, a lot of the time it's just like very subtle, and you're really kind of like backhanded, and I just, it's definitely my kind of humour, like, like sometimes it's really stupid. I'm having a really good time, I think her writing just really works for me, um, and I do like the characters. And I think like the premise and plot doesn't interest me as much as like small miracles because small miracles it's like you know angels, demons, good deeds, all of this and I think also the characters I did like a little more in that but I still really enjoy this I'm, I'm, I'm only about halfway through but I'm enjoying it and yeah I'm excited to like read more of the series because I think the other books follow different characters. Okay so I don't really have any updates from where I was at yesterday. I am 174 pages in, so I have like less than 110 pages. I, I think it's 105 pages I have left. I'm, I'm just having a really good time with it. Like, I find it so funny because I'm like, if you had like put all of Olivia Atwater's books in front of me last year and like was like, okay, have a look at them, you know, read the stuff and all of that. And like, do you want them? I would probably have been like, no. <laughs> I don't know, she just really, the way she writes, it just, uh, it just works for me. So I'm not gonna complain about that, I mean. But yeah, I so like I'm having a really good time. And I think my fantasy love is still always gonna be like epic fantasy, like political and all of that. But I always think it's fun when you explore your tastes more and expand it. I think it was either 2020 or 2021 was the first year I ever like read a romance and I actually ended up really liking it. I love the case quotient. But I never thought that I would be. And same with like in April. I tried a lot of sci-fi and I found something that I really really like and really love so I always enjoy like exploring taste and I love being surprised and that's absolutely the case with like these books uh I did a whole like cozy fantasy reading vlog and most of them were there was a two star and then there was two three stars but all miracles was a four so I think she just like the way she writes it it just really works for me so when you get to be surprised by new genres and that does excite me that I'm learning more about my taste in fantasy and that like I don't need to just limit myself to like the big chunky ones. Uh, I'm gonna finish this today. <laughs> um, I might, mm, I'm trying to decide. I might finish it, yeah, I might read this this morning and then in this, af this afternoon I might play some sims and listen to an audiobook. I finished like the actual story but there's like a 35 page novel at the end so I'm gonna read that of course as well. Um, but like the story itself is going to be a four stars like a pretty high four stars not as high as small miracles but i don't even know why i love them so much i just do they're just i just love them okay. i'm going to read short novella which i think is a prequel and it's about elias and then i think there's also another novella which takes place after this and but you have to sign up to her website. So I've now officially completely finished it, including the novella. And then the novella, it follows Albert, who is one of like the side characters, who's Elias's, who's with, Elias is the magician and Albert is his like best friend. And it follows the two of them when they were fighting and, and them like becoming friends. And I think it added a lot to kind of like the backstory. And because obviously we learn a lot about Elias and it's all through Dora's perspective and so I guess a lot of the time you're left believing that maybe Albert doesn't know these things about him and you learn in the novella that like no he does and he just doesn't care <laughs> and it's very sweet 
and I think and like in her like afterward she basically says that the whole point of this story is just small acts of kindness which fits with what small miracles is also about in like Regency era and all of that and history you know, terrible things happening and all of that and um a big point part, part of this book is about workhouses and how terrible they were and all of that it's kind of about how they can't just immediately fix all of the problems but if they can take this small thing and try and make that a little better then the world will be better slowly but surely and I think that's just I like that it's very sweet I I think that's probably why I really like that book because that's very much like my philosophy like obviously I think you should try and better yourself and better the world in every way that you can but sometimes you just you don't have the resources or things like that and so if you take one small thing and put your effort into making that small thing just a small bit better if everyone did that the world would be a much better place and so like you don't have to do absolutely everything perfectly like if you have like one thing that you're really passionate about making better and you like put that effort in then hopefully you can make a difference and I think that's probably why maybe her books speak to me because that seems to be a big part of her philosophy in these books um and you definitely kind of get that with small miracles as well like this one that's just like a thing that's happening in the background whereas in small miracles like there's you know a sin counter uh you know doing good things and doing bad things and all of this uh even that's like a big topic on like when people are like in bad positions in their life often their sin count goes up and like how is that fair when they're just like in a bad position her humor and her writing makes me laugh and all of that and i enjoy her characters and then i think also mixed on top of that is like i guess like just like i like the messages of just like trying to make things better just little by little update time i started and finished <laughs> in deeper waters by ft lukens yesterday while i was playing sims because it's only nine hour and 15 minutes i think audiobook and i listen on three times speed so I just played Sims for three hours while listening to it. Yeah. And I gave it four stars and it definitely fit the brief of, you know, lighthearted, feel good kind of vibes. I talk often about the fact that I'm growing out of YA, but this is definitely like, yeah, I wanted this at this moment because like, I do definitely have like, like there is, like I do definitely have things that I'm like, on another day, it would have really bothered me. But yesterday it did not really bother me because like it was pretty insta lovey and I feel like some of the things just weren't really resolved at the end but I didn't care like that's not what I was here for I was here for a fun time and a good time and I got those <laughs> the story follows Prince Tal and he has magic and his like great-grandfather also had magic and he used it to basically terrorize neighboring kingdoms and so he has had to keep this a secret his whole life and he is now 16 and so he's going on his coming of age tour and they end up coming across a ship and he frees someone who was like trapped to in the ship and then this person immediately jumps overboard and uh tal is like obviously pretty upset over this and then a couple days later while he's in the town he sees this boy again and he's perfectly fine it's obviously a of romance between the two of them but then also he ends up getting kidnapped and they're trying to make him like expose his magic number one it is the same narrator that does murderbot and that was a little weird. I got used to it after a while because like, if you've listened to the Murderbot Diary audiobooks, like he does a very good Murderbot. And so to me, like his voice is automatically Murderbot. It was like, I know this voice and it's Murderbot voice, but it's not quite Murderbot voice. <laughs> so uh, there was a lot more kind of variation, let's say in this book. And so after a while, like I got used to it and I just, I do like his narration. So, um, I just feel like I struggle like if I listen to a narrator for a particular book series I find it really hard to listen to them narrate another audiobook which I feel like most people don't have that problem I think that's definitely just like a weird me thing but oh well this is definitely like slightly heavier than like half a soul but I would still classify it as like a lighthearted because I don't think for a, a single second like even in like the dark moments of the book there was no part of me that was like thought that this was going to turn out really horribly i didn't really feel many states which most other times i would be complaining about that that i didn't feel 
like anything could go wrong with this but that's what I wanted right now so usually it would be a negative but right now it is a positive for me so you know keep that in mind if you want to read this he, like our character he gets kidnapped and all of that he's struggling with it but I think there's never really a time when anyone around him gives him time to get lost in those kind of feelings and like really feel terrible like obviously we see his like inner turmoil a little bit but there's always people like there immediately just like friends family you know crush who are like there and like ready to do anything that they can to support him and I think that's where like the feel good stuff comes in because like there's never a moment where like there's like very few moments that actually feel kind of like lonely I think it's a book that's going to stick with me for very long but it did it did its job in the moment and so I'm giving it four stars uh I feel like if I read it on another day it would probably have been a three but it was what I wanted at the moment so it was a good wreck now um the audiobook for the anthropocene reviewed has come through to me and so i've already read this this is going to be a reread but this is a book of it's an essay collection by john green and he is just ranking different parts of the human experience and it is definitely feel good and like kind of like like obviously with the two books i've already read and with this there are moments in it that you know look at the harder sides of life and the horrible things but I think the overall tone is hopeful and that's why that's kind of like the thing like I don't mind if there's sad stuff or anything like that that's happening as long as the, the overall tone is hopeful because like obviously a lot of the time we all talk about how you know humanity is doomed and all of this and like in the essays like he does talk about like some bad things but he also talks about like the most silly insignificant things that just prove how good humanity can be when it wants to be i'm gonna go play the sims again it's it's a, it's a problem hello so i spent the entire afternoon playing the sims and doing this which i would like to point out so i think basements are glitched in the sims 4 because i made a basement and it automatically changed the entire terrain and it wouldn't undo it until i deleted the basement i listened to this all afternoon and i finished it and I still love it because it was kind of like a case where I was like last year I was just like in a, I was in a reading club, I was in a life slump. It was like the only one that kept my attention. And I read it in like two days. Now I've read it in one day. <laughs> and so I was kinda of like, was it just the moment? And like maybe it's still just the moment because like I just want something I mean the whole point of this vlog is I want like feel good, lighthearted stuff. We just this isn't necessarily lighthearted at times, but it is feel good. I think it's really sweet and really thoughtful and all of that. It's such a good mix of like emotional, personal anecdotes, and then also like really fun and interesting facts that you might not know. Most of it is like his own personal connection or feelings on things, but that's like the start of the book. He says that when he started writing these, reviews it started as like official reviews where you're objective which he then acknowledges that because he, he his first one that he ever did was on diet dr pepper which he knows that he is biased that he loves it and so he wrote a review and it was biased and even though it was like as an omniscient narrator it still did contain his bias even if he was trying to appear that it didn't he kind of just decided that no I am part of these things so my experience will affect it and I think that's nice. A lot of my favorite ones are funnily enough sports related. I don't care about sports. I hate sports except figure skating but even then I also hate figure skating. It's a love-hate relationship. It's very complicated. So I think my like favorite more like lighthearted ones would be Penguins of Madagascar and Canada Geese. Oh, and Jersey Dudek's performance on May 25th, 2005, which is one about soccer. I don't care about soccer, but it was a nice essay. And then the ones that like, the two that like actually got me tearing up are the ones that are Harvey and The Yips, which The Yips is again another sports one. And that was my favorite essay. That was probably my favorite essay. And it was my favorite the first time I read it because like, I was like, 
I don't know about baseball. I've never watched a game of baseball in my life, and yet I was tearing up. I really love this book. So yeah. And now I have one more to read, and it's a manga. And I, so I might read it this evening. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Okay, so just here to wrap this up. So, I read, oh, what's it called? Our Not So Lonely Travel Guide Volume 1. And I gave it a three stars. I liked it. I do think that it's sweet. I'm still trying to figure out what, where, what, slash if I like graphic novels, manga. I feel like they're nearly always three stars. And I just, I'm not sure if it's just because I'm not like the most visual person in lecture, but there have been a couple that I have enjoyed. So, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, I was intrigued. I mean, the characters seemed sweet, but I just, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really care that much. Characters seem sweet, and like the story seems sweet, and like there's like things that you don't know because like obviously something has happened in the past, but we don't know what it is. Obviously, like to keep you reading and stuff, but like I just don't care enough to keep going. I don't think, but like I definitely see why people would enjoy this. As I said, I'm pretty sure this. Book, like you know, this might be my second manga, but like the first one I read was like years ago before BookTube. Um, I, like I know, like when you're reading them physically, obviously you go from back to front. Obviously on Scribd, it's still, you're just flipping the pages normally. But I didn't know what way I was supposed to be like reading the text on the page, I guess. Because I swear, sometimes it seemed to go like left to right. Like, you know, like you'd go like the picture here, then to the picture here, then to the picture. And then other times it would be like starting in the bottom right hand corner and going around. And like, I was like, is this me being an idiot or is this person just like, starting sentences wherever they want I just kind of figure it out so yeah I don't know <laughs> but I mean it's definitely not bad I think it's sweet I think it's cute three stars so yes so I read how many books did I read this I read four books you know what this was pretty successful I think yeah yeah this was uh, it was a nice one time it did what I needed it to do and now I'm ready to get back into like the chunkier epic fantasy I have a lot of them on my TBR this month. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one.